A lesson goal for today is to be able to use the distributive property. We're going to multiply the 4 over addition and subtraction. 4 times 5m and 4 times 6, which will give us 20m plus 24. 6 times 2m and 6 times 3, that's going to give us 12m minus 18. The 20m plus the 12m are like terms. We're going to combine those and get 32m. 24 minus 18 gives us a plus 6. In our second goal for today, we're going to try to figure out what number can divide both 32 and 6. And this is called factoring out the greatest common factor. In this particular case, it's 2. 2 times 16 is 32, and 2 times 3 is 6. So when we factor out the 2, we're going to be left with 2 times the quantity, 16 plus 3. By the end of this lesson, I'll be able to simplify expressions by distributing, combining like terms, and factoring. What is it called when we reverse the actions of the distributive property? If I wanted you to add six apples and five apples, you would simply put it in a bag and you'll know that you have 11 apples. How about if I wanted you to add six oranges and five apples? What would you do now? What would we have? Well, if you stated we would have 11 apples, that would be wrong. If you said 11 apples, also wrong. We would simply say we have six oranges and five apples because they're not the same. They are not like when not making smoothies. This is very similar to when we were talking about like fractions and unlike fractions. Unlike fractions did not have the same denominator, so we couldn't add them. Like fractions had the same denominator, so we could add. In an algebraic expression, like terms are terms that have the same variable raised to the same exponent. Constant terms are also like fractions. So in this particular case, since these are the same exact variables, x and x, I can say 6x plus 2x is 8x, and then 18 plus 7 is 25. What's 7x plus 6x? Well, all you have to do is add the coefficients. 7 plus 6 is 13, so we have 13x. In this particular case, what's 8x plus 4x? Well, again, all you have to do is add the coefficients. 8 plus 4 is 12, so we have 12x. In this particular case, what's 9x plus 9y? If you said 18xy, you are wrong because they're not like terms. So we're just 9x plus 9y. x is not the same as y. It has to be exactly the same. Not almost, not close, not kind of. It has to be exactly the same. What's 6x plus 4xy? And again, variables have to be exactly the same. In this case, this is an x and that's an x, but this also has this additional y. So the variables are not exactly the same. So it's just 6x plus 4x plus y. When we take a look at this one, well, we can see we have a 9x and a plus 7x. Those are like terms. And then we also have a plus 5y and a plus 2y. And those are like. So now all we have to do is add the coefficients. We get 16x plus 7y. In this particular case, again, we have a 5x and a minus 4x that are alike, and a 9y plus 6y that are alike. All we have to do is add or subtract in this case our coefficients. 5 minus 4 is 1. But remember, none of the cool kids ever write 1. They just simply say it's x. It's not like I have, oh, I have one apple. You would say, I just have an apple. In this particular case, well, they all are alike, so we just have to add all the coefficients. When we add all the coefficients, we would end up with 8x. And again, we have to add all the coefficients. In this case, when we add all the coefficients, since they all are like terms, we would get actually a negative 6x. So simplify. Try to make sure you can do these two before I begin. If a variable doesn't have a coefficient visible, there's always an invisible one. So in this case, all we have to add are coefficients and we get 4m. There's no need to show those first two steps. It's just 4m. In this case, we have a like term 2n plus 5n, and this would give us 7n. And then we have a plus 9 and a plus 12, which would give us plus 21. What if Quavo from the Migos went to the grocery store and bought five bars of Twix, two bags of Cheetos, four boxes of Nerds, and a bottle of Gatorade, and three of his fans noticed him in the store and decided to make the same identical purchases? How much of each item did Quavo's fans purchase in total? You may want to pause and see if you can figure that out. 
If you stated 15 bars of Twix, 6 bags of Cheetos, 12 boxes of Nerds, and 3 bottles of Gatorade, you are correct. But how does this relate to mathematics? Well, instead of writing those long words, we could just use variables. T for Twix, C for Cheetos, N for Nerds, and G for Gatorade. And then we can write expressions saying, oh, the three outside the parentheses would be the three fans. Now, if we wanted to figure this out, all we have to do is use the distributor prop, distribute. 3 times 5t would be 15t, 3 times 2 would give us 6c, 3 times 4n would give us the 12n, and 3 times g would give us the 3g. Remember, there's that invisible one. And that would give us the 15 bars of Twix, the 6 bags of Cheetos, the 12 boxes of Nerds, and the 3 bottles of Gatorade. The distributor property states it's okay to multiply over addition or subtraction. Please try these um, three problems and see if you can get them right before I begin. In the first one, we're going to distribute the 3. That's going to give us 6x. 3 times 9 would give us a plus 27. In this particular case, this would give us 8x plus 8y plus 8z. Last case, x times x. Hmm, what's that? Well, we know that 7 times 7 is 49, but we also could write it as 7 squared. x times x would just simply be x squared. x times 3 will give us the plus 3x. Two other properties that I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over is the first one is the identity property of addition and multiplication. Remember, identity is almost like your ID card. When you look at your ID card, you should see a picture of yourself. And if you don't see a picture of yourself, then you probably have the wrong ID card. When we're multiplying, what always gives you the same exact thing? Well, that's one. So the identity element of multiplication is one because five times one is five. You're getting the same exact thing. In addition, it's zero because anytime you add zero, you're not changing the number. Five plus zero is five. You're getting the same thing. And the zero property of multiplication, everyone should know that one. Remember, anytime you're multiplying by zero, you just get zero. So let's distribute. So let's see if you can distribute these before I begin. In the first one, two times two X is four X. Two times three is plus six Y. Two times five is plus 10. And in this one, we would go 3 times 4, which would give us the 12H, 3 times 6, which would give us plus 18, and then we have plus 3G. Now, in mathematics, we like to put everything in order. So the first thing we always do is put our variables first. We also put them in degree order. That would be a later lesson. But right now, we want to just make sure we put it in alphabetical order once we put the variables first. Since G comes before H in the alphabet, we would say 3G plus 12H plus 18. You may want to try it yourself. 2 times 7H, which would give us 14H. 2 times 5, which would give us plus 10. And then just 5H. We are not distributing to the 5H because it's not inside the parentheses. We just bring it down plus 5H. Now, which one comes first? They both are H's. Neither one comes before the other. They are called like terms. So all we have to do is combine them. And notice when I circled, I circled the plus. I know it's a plus because it could be a minus. So you always want to circle operation in front of your like term. So this reads as 14H plus 5H, which is 19H. And then bring down the plus 10. So let's take a look at this one. This one's going to be 2040 plus 16 and then bring down the 9. Now remember, constants are always considered like terms. So all we have to do is combine our constants and we're left with 24t plus 25. Remember when we're trying to find the LCM and GCF, we used a factor bracket, that upside down thingamabob. And then we said, oh yeah, we can factor out a 2, but then this is not completely factored. So we said, oh, we can factor out a 3. So then 2 times 3 gave us the GCF, and we were able to find our LCM by multiplying the 3 times the 12 and the 2 times the 18. And then we said, oh, yeah, instead of doing 2 first, we could have did 3, but then we would have to do 2 as well, okay, to find the LCM. Or we could have said, oh, a lot faster would have been to just do 6. Well, this is going to help us with the next thing on our agenda, and that's called factoring. Writing a numerical expression or algebraic expression as a product of factors is called factoring their expression. So when we see, when we're trying to factor this expression, 21 and 6 is divisible by what same number? In this case, it would be 3. 
then we can rewrite it as three times seven plus three times two. Now we can factor out the three, and it's gonna be three times the quantity seven plus two. And if we wanted to check it, we can go, oh, seven plus two is nine, three times nine is 27. And we already knew that 21 plus six was 27. What can I factor out of 28 and 21? If you said seven, you are correct. So we can write 28 as seven times four. We could write 21 as seven times three. Now we can factor out that seven, leaving us with seven times the quantity four plus three. Again, you are finished. There's nothing more you have to do. If you want to check it, you may, but that's it. We stop right here. We do not go further. When we take a look at the next example, we can factor out a four and it's going to be four times X plus four times two. Factor out that four and we're left with four times the quantity X plus two. And we are done. That's it. Nothing more. And this next one, we can also factor out a four. That's going to be four times three X plus four times four. This is equal to four times the quantity three X plus four. You could always check it and see if it's right. And that would be saying, oh, four times X is four X and four times two is eight. But that's checking it, but that doesn't tell us that we're actually right. It kind of says, yeah, we did factor correctly, but did we factor completely? Because in 12 X plus 16, we could have factored out a two. And this would give us two times six X plus eight. If I distribute two times six, it's going to give me the 12 X and the two times eight, but I didn't factor completely. Within that 6x plus 8, I'm going to have to factor again, and I'm going to have to factor out a 2 out of the 6 and the 8. This will give me 2 times the quantity 3x plus 4. Now I can multiply the 2 times the 2, and that would give me 4x times the quantity 3x plus 4. This tends to be a little bit more challenging. Knowing your timetables really well will allow you to pick out the greatest common factor most of the time. Every once in a while, this does happen. The better you know your multiplication facts, it's going to make it a lot easier. Hope you enjoyed the lesson and have a great day.